Welcome to Life on Life's Terms with your host, Justin. And it's Kenny. So this is the beginning or the kickoff of the Supernatural Month. We're, we're going to talk about UFOs and aliens, uh, different meditative practices, the Mayan calendar stuff, and are we living in a matrix? And whatever else pops up throughout, throughout the, the, uh, the episode. But before we get into that, these are here are the shout outs. Since it's always training season, what does your meal plan look like? Is keeping a healthy diet robbing from your palate and triggering unhealthy cravings? Probably. <laughs> Keep on your A game and stop cravings at the same time with Ono Poke. Ono Poke is a perfect place to stuff your face with something that ties into your fitness goals. Try the miso salmon poke, spicy Thai salmon, or the albacore tuna poke on your choice of veg, quinoa, or rice. Eat right, eat healthy, eat Ono poke. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this world getting to you too much? Do you want to start living in a matrix for like an hour? Do you want to detach, get the fuck out of here for a little bit? Probably the best place to do that is our friends Modern over at Modern Gravity. <laughs> For only thirty nine ninety nine a month, you can have the detaching feeling of this earth, or I guess leaving this earth. Yeah. Whatever the fuck it is. Go check them out at www.moderngravity.ca. They've got great deals. Um, tell them Life on Life's Terms sent you. They'll hook you up. And uh, yeah, so our bills are paid. Yeah. That's, that's that. Actually, you know, floating and the supernatural month or woo-woo or yeah whatever like that goes hand in hand like i i got into that space of the void oh yeah for sure yeah for sure some people don't some people are like so i've been actually talking to quite a bit of people about floating and the, some of them are saying like the third float is the breaker that's where they drift on away you gotta you gotta get through Onto the other side, I guess, to quote the doors. <laughs> and don't like don't drink coffee before a float. Yeah. That's what fucked me for the second time. That and I was like, I kept coughing. Yeah, yeah. Coffee, yeah, coffee will mess you up. Yeah. yeah. It, was it because you had to pee or was it because you you were like jittery? No, if I if I had to pee, I would just pee. Not in the float. You can't do that. Man, I pee in the pool all the time. But it's not a pool, you'll just sit there in your own piss for like an hour. I'm okay with that. Uh, other people aren't. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking gross. <laughs> um, so UFOs and aliens. Have you ever gotten your girlfriend to pee on you? No. No? I've had John's pay hookers to do it. But not your girlfriend's, like, pee on my face. No? Fuck, you're not even living life, man. <laughs> I'm not fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get fucking aliens here. Let's get to the aliens. Aliens and UFOs. What are, what's your take on it? I believe 100,000 million percent in aliens. So I believe I believe we are aliens. <sighs> okay, well, well, okay. I think some of this stuff, uh, I want to believe it. So therefore, I'm like easily gullible, okay? But there's some stuff is undeniable, like that I've seen, and I'll unpack that. So we've got a UFOologist coming on the show. Sick. Yeah, and so we're gonna unpack. Um, we're gonna unpack. I want to be there for that. Well, if we can tie it in, we'll tie it in. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna unpack some of that. Uh, and I'm probably going to rely heavily on what I know from the old texts in the Catholic Church, because the Catholic Church. So this is this is a big thing that I've. Well, I shouldn't say big thing, but this is a definitely a filter I've seen of people who look at the Catholic Church. Like we don't believe in evolution. Um, we do. Evolution is real for us. Uh, secondly, we were the first people outside of Galileo to make like the biggest telescope. Like, yeah, the church be was before the Hubble. So like, we've been looking at the stars and the Catholic church for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Read a, a, a Dan Brown book. Well, I mean, it is fiction. I mean, it's that those parts are based on something of fact, yeah. but he definitely takes, uh, artistic right in what he writes. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, 
but yeah, like so we've had in the Catholic Church, we, we we're not opposed to what I mean. We use words like alien and celestial in, in the Bible. Now, I'm we're gonna I'm I know we're gonna get a lot of hate on this, um, but what's the difference between the Catholic Bible and the and like um, the King James version? Well, the Catholic version's right. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because we don't hold back any. Like the Catholics don't hold back any books. We actually give you the majority of the books of the Bible. How come only a majority and not the, all of them? Because the majority is like if you look at are any of the books in the Catholic Bible written by women? Uh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like uh I forget her name. It starts with an E Edith or something like that. It's in the Old Testament. Yeah, but just, we have, just one? We have that one. Nothing in the New Testament. How come Catholics and Christians depict God as a male figure? Um, Because it was supposed to be... So it was a depiction of authority. So actually, my depiction of God is a baby. It's It's a two-year-old child that I would probably have a hard time humbling myself in front of. Like, it, it would be very difficult for me to listen to, like, a three-year-old child and say, get on with your fucking life. You know what I mean? Like, I would look at that and be like, I could beat you up. <laughs> right? Like, that's what I think in my head. So, like, when whenever I'm meditating, my God is, a, is a, like, an, like a fucking four-year-old child. That's what it is for me. Because it's the hardest thing for me to accept as a kid. Like, like as a God. Or something that could give me, give me that kind of, like, insight. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a fucking test. Is it a redhead? No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, uh. So, so yeah, that's that's. I will probably be relying heavily on um. What I've learned from the church about supernatural and the outside, and then an Earth. I was gonna go along the line of. Like demons and exorcisms and stuff like that, but I just don't... I might do that next season. I don't think I'll do that this season. It's just... It's not the time for me to talk about it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, So, do you know anything about numerology? I do. Quite a bit. So I took quantum physics in university. So I know quite a bit about it. And I know how quantum physics ties in to like your being of state, so on and so forth, and how quantum physics is everything. Uh, I have a hard time explaining it, but I do understand it. What about like three, six, and nine? Well, it depends on what you get from that. So, well, like, like, you know, how it's Nikola Tesla said that the numbers three, six, and nine rule the universe. Sure, I agree with that. Like I agree with his theory. I mean, it's no, it's not fully proven, but I agree with his theory. So, there's this documentary on YouTube. It's seven hours long, and it touches on numerous things. Uh, it's called Ancient Knowledge. Oh yeah, yeah. It yeah. was removed from YouTube for a while, but it's back. And the picture is like. One picture of a guy next to a picture of a girl, and one's like covering their eyes, and the other is covering their mouth. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, in this seven hour documentary, they touch on like Freemasons holding secret information. Uh, That's all a bunch of bullshit. Uh, well, like, have you ever heard of the Coral Castle in Florida? Yeah. So, the Coral Castle was built by this like little guy, like my size. Yeah who was a Freemason, and he had, like, this, like, contraption machine that he used, it so spun, it. and had magnetics, ma- magnets on it, like, positive and negative, like, alternating. So... And it's depicted, apparently, uh, this same mechanism in all of uh, the Freemasons, like, symbolism and, and artistry and tapestries on the walls and shit like that. And... Wait, 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 just let, let me... Let me but unload that guy shit. wasn't a Freemason. Okay, okay. Uh... Have you watched? Well, we got to. Will you watch that? So I know. Yeah, I've seen it. I know, I know what you're speaking of, and the reason why I know what you're speaking of is because that technology actually comes from the Egyptians. 
And so the reason what they were using it for, so one of my papers in school was on the Egyptian, on the architecture or the archaeology of the pyramids. Yeah, because they're made of limestone. We could have never picked it up. We still to this day do not have machinery that could pick up those rocks today. And so the depiction of people putting those those building blocks on logs to move them would have never happened. Yeah, we, yeah. we couldn't have did it in the first place. And when you look at how far that when you look at how far the quarry was away from where the pyramids actually are of what they used to build Limestone. You, you would have killed many, many people trying to just get that material there. So, what this guy that you're that you speak of from the from the Coral Palace, Coral Castle, Cor, Coral Castle, he actually knows what. Well, what he learned was how to make things weightless, and it's underneath a tripod, and it can move anything. It's basically what it was. Nobody's ever seen him use it, but the fact of the matter is, is the abundance of weight that he moved there's no way he could have moved it yeah now also in this movie so this is where i was intrigued if you go so in the movie they talk about france and how there's a landing pad for celestians or for ufos so if you look at where the rocks come from as a geologist would right they looked at these rocks and they come from not even in france and they're massive some of them are like like uh, 50 and 70 tons. Tons. Okay, like like they're massive. What are they made out of? They don't know. I, exactly. Like they don't know what it is. But what you do know is from space, you can see that field. So even where the saddle, like where the space station is right now, they can see that field. And everything has a negative force on it. Like, so if you were going through with a compass, your compass would never be able to get a bearing because it's got a negative force in it. So they're magnetic rocks. And what they are saying is that when spaceships come in, these rocks pull them to the earth. So it's like a landing pad. And then the field just adjacent to it doesn't even have a pebble in it. It was cleared out. And it was made at the same time that the pyramids were made. They know that as a fact because of the move of it. There's no way it was the Ice Age that moved it. It's impossible to say that it was that. It had to have been physically moved because of the way that they're placed and they're pla- these rocks, or these magnetic rocks are placed in such a way that is to like consort together to pull things down. And you, like I said, you can see it from space. It's like, like it's a landing strip you could see from space. And if you were to figure out the trajectory of what it is to enter Earth, it would have been on a line when our Earth was 180 degrees different than what it is today. Yeah, so like aren't like the uh, the pyramids in Peru, the Esther Islands, uh, the that big fucking, have you heard of the big castle off the coast of Japan? Like the giant's castle? Oh, the Anunnaki. Okay, so they f- they found these fucking apparently this is apparent. Uh, they found these like fifteen or like eighteen foot long coffins made of pure platinum. Oh, yeah. In this fucking castle off the coast of Japan. Okay, the the same thing lines up in Iran, which is where like the people believe that the Anunnaki are from. So like, you know, the in the Bible, the whole story of David and Goliath? Yeah. Goliath would have, would have been an Anunnaki. So that like, for sure, they have bones and foss, fossils yeah. of men. We would think of it as a man that are like 12 to 20 feet tall. They have like the same bone structure as us, the whole bet, just bigger. Yeah. A lot bigger. And so, I mean... There is a definite viable theory out there of giants, right? Like yeah, giants yeah. ruled the earth, right? There, there's definitely a viable Fucking theory. Fucking watch that. Game of Thrones, man. Now, if you read the Bible, the Bible also reiterates that. Yeah, I like, remember like reading it that. All, it all kind of falls into it, Yeah, right? Like, I think the Bible gets a real bad rap because historically you cannot use it as an artifact to date things 
That's not what the Bible is meant for. Instead, what the Bible was actually meant for was to historically tell you how humanity gained in spirituality. That's, that's really what it's for. It's to benchmark, like, when spirituality was enheightened within the human race. That's really in, what it is. In that way. Because there was other spiritual practices and beliefs that had nothing to do with Jesus. Well, there's paganism, right? But but they all are on a line. Or even, like, if you want to believe... What in, about, like, the borrowed shit in Christianity from paganism? Well, they all line up together. Same thing, like, if you look at the Vikings, they believe in Valhalla. Well, what's Valhalla? I have no idea. God, that's, that's the heaven. Okay. That's, that's their name of heaven. And they had... See, this is the thing, is you have all of these cultures and all of these th- places that would have never met each other, yet they're all talking about the same thing. So why is it that it's the same, if you want to call it a story, why is it that essentially the same story is being reiterated time and time and time and time again, just a little bit skewed? But it's the same story over and over again. Like, you can't say that the Jews in the Middle East could get that story from the Vikings way up in Scandinavia, but they're both talking about the same thing. Like ones like the Vikings are talking about Thor and the god of Thor and what he was. That, that was their god. Look at Greece. Greece was talking about Zeus and all these other gods. And sure, they were very paganistic, but Hercules was still half man, half god. Right? I yeah. mean, it's it, it's all the same story reiterated with different names. So we need. I think what we need to venture away from is that we, we have to stop getting tied up on the semantics of what religion is trying to show us. Like I said, really all of those things are trying to show us the histori- historical lineage of spirituality being in height- in heightened within the human race. I mean, when you think of the story of Cain and Abel, well, what is that? That's really at a precipice of time when humanity realized that murder was fucking bad. Because let's face it, you and I would murder animals all day long if we lived in the bush today. Yeah. With, without consequence. No, we got to eat. E- exactly. Well, guess what? When you had a problem with another man, it was only just a little while ago that you were going to get hit with a murder charge and actually caught. For a long time, murdering a, another man for a problem that you had was no big deal. Yeah. Fucking shoot him. Who cares? Yeah. But you have to understand that the morality of that... It's arc from Cain and Abel to where we are today. That morality has just been growing. And now we have people that would rather eat vegetables than harm a cow that was raised to die for you. Yeah, check out our last couple episodes for buttloads so, of that shit. But, so, so, <laughs> but, but you see what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like, So this is the arc, right? That's the arc of the whole, of the whole thing. So like... You can watch ancient aliens tell you're blue in the face, but essentially, there, you know, that that's the, the that's the theory that they keep coming up with, time and time again. Spoiler alert, like like that's what it is, you know. So, like I said, I'm I'm along the line to believe that or to try to understand UFOs and what aliens. And, and the whole alien thing. I just heard some pretty... I want to know how fucking The Simpsons predicted Trump as president. Uh, I think that there's an algorithm that they use, man. An algorithm? How the fuck would they know? Do you know there was a picture, like, identical to The Simpsons cartoon with, yeah. like, some Saudi Arabian guy, yeah, yeah. Trump, and some other brown guy? yeah. yeah. On this fucking Simpsons, man, yeah, like I 10 think, years ago. Yeah, I think I think it's an algorithm. Because like even right now, uh, the internet is predicting things from an algorithm and, and an artificial intelligence. We have to understand... Is The Rock going to be president but you, we have of to, Canada? We have to understand what like... <laughs> Prime Minister. What, what artificial intelligence actually is. So like people think that artificial intelligence is something that we program. We're not programming it anymore. No, now it's learning on its own. Every time we use, like the internet's like an orb, right? Every time we ask it a question, and every time, it gets smarter. Every time we drive, and we say, fuck that, we're, I'm not taking that route. This route's faster. It learns and it. That's right. And it learned why we changed. 
So here, I had I thought about so, this the so, other day. But okay. hold on. So so really, what it's learning is it's not learning better because probably the algorithm and the AI is probably smarter than us. What it's actually learning is the humanism, which is far more fucked up than learning accuracy. We're not accurate. Humans are valuable all day long. Like, like we are fucking messes on our own. We, <laughs> we, we really are. Collectively, we've got something. But on our own, individually, we're a fucking mess from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. So, like, right? You know how, like, if you have an idea, you're like, you tell your spouse, you're like, hey, babe, guess what? Yeah, yeah. I just had a fucking sick idea. Yeah, yeah. And you spit it out. Yeah. Well, now your phone was just listening to oh, that. Oh, 100%. And like, so who got that information? Was it Google? And like, are they immediately sending somebody out to go create that because they have the fucking financial well, I think, startup? I think, I think that's, I think that's a little, I think that's a little crazy. I think that's a little too far. I but, don't know, man. But like, what, I, what, I, <laughs> what I do think, what I do think is it's, it's learning how you learn. It's learning. See, the, see, the whole idea about human isn't isn't about creating and producing that that's that's not the humanness it's the fact that we can foul it up all day long and it still comes off that's that's the precious part okay the fact that you said fuck you i'm not taking the most efficient way home i'm taking my own way and reroute me motherfucker that's that's what we say to google reroute me fuck you Google's now figuring out how the fuck to reroute you to do your thing. And really what it learned was how you're still going to make it come off while not going like the most efficient way. Fuck authority. So like <laughs> that's, what go that's what the AI is trying to learn. Because now, you see, when we communicate, this is actually a really poor form of communication. Because the way that we communicate... There's not enough vernacular and vocabulary for us to truly articulate our feelings. It's very difficult. Yeah, I heard Engl we, we, the English language is shit for that. Even the French language. All languages are because it's its own barrier. Now imagine this if we were sitting there. That's why we got to like start making our own words. So, so no, I, I don't agree with that either. What, what, I, what I'm getting at is when we're sitting there with um, like a virtual reality and you're plugged in to an AI, it can now, instead of giving you words to communicate with you, it's just going to give you the picture. And it's going to figure out your feelings from that picture, and that's how it's going to communicate with you. So what's the best way of teaching your children? Make it fun. Well, guess what AI with virtual reality is going to do? It's going to make it fun all the time, and it's going to be individualized for that singular person. And it will eventually be able to take that from the mother and the father, because we talked about inherent nurturing. We talked about that in the last, in the last episode. Yeah. This is a fucking reality. And your phone has been keeping that, 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 entire, that entire caseload of you being for your entire life. For the, the entire time that you had that phone. And if you don't think that we're not getting there, read George, well, George Orwell's 1984. As much as it was nonfiction, the parallel to our life today is very, very similar. It is. Isn't that fucked up? And then the other side to that is read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Then look at where Aldous Huxley comes from and how he's tied to Sigmund Freud and to Pavlov and to all of the what they call the grandfathers or the godfathers of psychology then and, and psychiatry. Then look at how those people are tied into people like fucking Aleister Crawley. And Aleister Crawley was like the most sadistic fuck ever in the world, man. Like the craziest guy in the world. That guy, that guy was, he had a, he had a, so he lived on uh, Ness Lake, Loch Ness Lake. He had a fucking, like chamber, torture chamber in his own house. Human sacrifices, the whole bit, man. For Nessie? He'd give well, them to the Loch Ness so Monster? A lot of people think that that came from him. I mean, I would suspect that Loch Ness is not real. But definitely the shit that Aleister Crawley did 
was a hundred percent real. I mean, he was, he started off as an alchemist. Just, just go and find out about, about, and, and you and I had a Crawley con- with a C or K? C. So y- you and I had a conversation about the difference between a Luciferian ideology and an ideology of servitude. Yeah. He is along the line of Luciferianism. So it's all about him taking. Like some witchcraft. Yeah. Through alchemy. Through alchemy. I had a friend. I wouldn't even really call him a friend right now. He's way too fucked up. But uh, he was the one that bring me to that discernment church. Oh, not discernment church. Uh, uh, deliverance. Yeah, deliverance church. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fuck yeah. me, man. This was the most fucked up church experience I ever had. <laughs> so, like, he's like, yeah, come check out my new church, man. Like, it's really crazy. Like, we cast demons out of people. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, right? <laughs> so I went, right? And uh, this pastor was started going buck, like, and saying shit I never would expect to hear at a fucking church. Like, I cast the pornography demons out of you, the masturbation demons, the demon of child pornography, the demon of self-mutilation, the demon of anal sex, the demon of oral sex, the demon of, like, he even said, like, uh, uh, what's, like, being gay. Like, he called it. Homosexuality? Homosexuality. And, like, as he's saying different demons, all of a sudden, like, the crowd in there started coughing and they kind of like nonchalantly pulled these IGA bags out of like their purse or their pocket. You mean grocery bags? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Plastic grocery bags. Plastic grocery yeah. bags out of their pocket. And they start <coughs> and like coughing and making themselves gag and spit and puke the demons out into these fucking grocery bags. Yeah. So I just like kind of like slid down in my chair. I pulled out my phone. I started recording this shit. Too bad I don't have that anymore. That was on an old phone and I probably ended up going to jail or something. Yeah. But fuck, that was like a game changer. I haven't been to church since, actually. Really? I? Yeah, shut me right down. Have you ever been to the Basilica here? No. Oh, we should do that. Which one's that? I like, don't know, man. I'm kind of skeptical now. Like, about like where uh, Gretzky was, was married. With the one on Jasper Ave, across yeah. from Sicilian Pass Kitchen? Yeah. That's yeah, a pretty fancy place. So it's St. Joseph's, right? Yeah. Saint, yeah. Yeah. And then there's also St. Joseph Hats over there. Yeah. yeah. I'll bring you in. I'll show you what it all means. What, on a Sunday? No. Like any time. It's always open. Really? Yeah. Like, And I'll show you the symbolism behind the entire building. Because the whole building is symbols. Like, like the whole, there's a tabernacle in there, the whole bit. Like, remember in the Bible, you, uh, you were reading what the tab- tabernacle... I still and, don't know what the fuck a tabernacle... I thought it was it, a church. What it looks like it's and a- blah, blah, blah. No, no, they, they have one. They have a replica of it, like, in, in there. Yeah, I'll bring uh-huh. it. Gold, the whole bit. Like, huge piece of gold, man. Like, they don't... They, you don't have to worry about stealing it because it's too fucking heavy for you to take <laughs> out the front door. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then there's actual symbolism of why the building's built the way that it is. So you're talking about Masons and stuff. Yeah. So the Masons, and I was part of the Knights of Columbus as well. I was never a Mason, but I was part of the Knights of Columbus. And I'm telling you, and I know Masons today. The only thing that they really have is it's an insurance fucking group. That's really what it is. I'm not the, shitting The you. Masons or the Knights of Columbus? Both. Both of them. So the only reason, like, the Masons are actually older than the Knights of Columbus, but they're both made for, <laughs> for insurance. That, that's all it is. It's a, it's a bunch of guys who get together, they do some hokey pokey shit, and it's all in the name of, like, Tempest Fugit Momento Mori. That's all it is. Like, what life the fuck is, did you just say? Like, life, life is short. Like Let, time flies. Drunk. No, it means time flies. So and life is short. So like, seize the day. Basically, that's what it means. Yeah, and it's it's some Latin stuff, sure. But I started watching one of those documentaries on the nights on uh, Freemasons. Yeah, it. it but it, all of that is like I read a book about Freemasons, and really at the end of the day, in the book, like the message it got across, and it was really like old English. It was hard to read, but uh, you know. You have to have a spiritual practice. 100%. They don't give a fuck what spiritual practice you have. Well, they do. You have to be outside of Catholicism. So, like, all of their practices are desecrating the Catholic practice. All of them. 
Like, I kid you not. Desiccating. Yeah, so, like, like they're... They're basically taking the Catholic practices of, like, our sanctity within, like, um, uh, like, uh, how would I explain this to you? Like, like, so we bless wine and we bless bread and we become cannibals and we eat Christ and we drink his blood. Yeah, it's fucked up. Okay, that's the symbolism behind it. That's fucked up. Because Christ asked us to do that. So anyways, that's the symbolism behind it. What the Masons do is they desecrate that. They they basically make fun of it in a theatrical way. Yeah, they have like this ritual. That's right. Many rituals. Yeah, yeah. So we in the Knights of Columbus also have rituals that what, we that we make go fun of them or what? No. So ours are like so the reason why Catholics are not allowed to join the Masons. There are some Catholics who are Masons, but the popes have always said that we're not allowed to join the Masons is because the Masons were a part of the Catholic Church at one time. And the what they were were they were called the Knights Templar. So the Knights Templar are and the now Knights Templar are st- still exist to this day. You can find them. And there's still a lineage of them. But the Masons were a part of the Knights Templar. And when they were cast out, these were some of the, this was the degradation that they kept within the fold in order to, like, desecrate the Catholic Church. So there's a lot of history behind that, obviously. And I'm doing a very shitty job of unpacking it. But that, in a nutshell, that's basically what happened. They were cast out of the church. And the reason why they were cast out of the church was because they were no longer serving within servitude. They were serving for initial, like, their own personal gains as opposed to gains of humanity or community. But that being said, I mean, the Catholic popes have done the same thing. They're, the real reason why popes and priests are not allowed to marry is because they did not want a lineage of royalty holding the papacy because that was starting to happen. That like that was happening. Yeah. 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 So, and so Cousin they fuckers. Well, no, like, no, no. Cause at one time you could be married as a priest. It wasn't for, it wasn't always like that. Like if you look at, uh, uh, there's a couple, I forget their names off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll bring it to the next show. There was a couple who were, they were married. They were married popes. And then so what they, they were doing they canceled was, that out and then a whole handful well, what of them ended up happening was they, predators. They were selling <laughs> the papacy to other people is what was happening. They were, they were selling the seat of the papacy. Like, like, for instance, when the president decides to give up his seat, he says, yo, this is how much it cost me. This is how many fucking points you're going to give me for the rest of my life. This, the pope was doing the same thing back in those times. And, and he was like selling it to family members in order to keep supremacy of his family in the papacy. Hmm. So what ended up happening was there was a, rev- a revolt in the church and they said, no more about that bullshit. Nobody's allowed to get married then. And then that's, that's why that rule became. And so they had to live in the likeness of Christ. Nobody knows if Christ was married or not. Hey, it was he was banging Mary Magdalene. Well, we don't know that. I I I heard that he had a kid. I mean, that's that's a whole Dan Brown lineage thing, but that's not really like. There's no validation to that. I think I'm I'm in Jesus's lineage. <laughs> I bet. I'm a fucking prophet. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, hey, what do you know of aliens? Well, I'm gonna move on to different meditation practices, actually, because I I don't oh. I don't want to I don't want to like. Do you own? To destroy all of the, like the alien UFO stuff. Do you own? Uh, yeah, I have. I have. I've so, also. Have you ever read the Emerald Tablets by apparently Toth? Thoth. No. So in the Emerald Tablets, he has his own meditation practice. Practice, like yeah. for vibration, right? Yeah. Zinuru. Zinuru. Have you have Zinuru. you have you watched uh, Wild Wild Country yet? 
on no. Netflix. Oh, fuck, I forgot. Fuck, you have to watch that, man. Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm going to go dive deep and like every week I'm going to try to pick out a, uh, four different meditation practices. Yeah. And throughout every week of the month I'm going to try to practice cuz I practice meditation anyways. So like if you keep your teeth closed and then say zinuru, try it. That's okay. Just try zinuru, zinuru with, okay. with your teeth closed. I, Feel the vibration in the back of your head. That's great, but I don't, I don't know actually what you're saying, so I I would have to I would have to watch. I'd have to figure that out first. Oh, okay. You don't want to be saying like "I hail Satan." Well, I don't. Yeah, like I don't know what you're saying. Okay. So that's that's where that is. But yeah, so I'm gonna pick up four different meditation practices throughout the for the four months. Um, What's the purpose of the pineal gland? That's where you see things in in your mind's eye. How come it's depicted as the eye of Ra or Horus? Both. Can't, well, it's not really. It looks like a pineapple. Like it looks like a uh, like a pine like a pine, pine cone. cone. Yeah, the it, eye of Horus doesn't isn't, isn't that like really, a, really a, like that. A symbol of the Rotary Club. Uh, I haven't seen. Pine, I don't think so. Pine cone. No, I think it's like I don't know what the Rotary. It's like a Club gear, is. but I think one of yeah. the symbols, either that or Freemasonry, is a pine cone. Like there's some there's some shit with Jesus holding the pine cone. <laughs> right? Yeah, and if you go to Rome there's a lot of a lot of that. Huh. I mean the pine cone is used for many things, but again, we could go that could be tied back to aliens. Like we don't know. Maybe like, it's like like like, like a like, ship. Like that's like trying to figure out you know, what's the origin of a word. You know what I mean? Like like that's what you're trying to figure out. So like as opposed to like figuring out what it's from, I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole of why are we here? Because that's that's basically the rabbit hole that one's going down. Instead, I'm going. I would rather figure out what's the exercise of the muscle and how do we get better at using it. That's what I would rather. I mean, it exists. It's there. Great. The master key system let's, by let's Charles move on. Hanel. Let's let's move on from that. Right. Like that's that's my whole point. Is like just to look just to look at what meditation is four different practices and then may you know come and talk about what those four are yo so in that book the the master key system sure he has an ongoing meditation practice for you to experiment with through the book okay where it just like involves you like staring at a doorknob for 15 minutes and like feeling the intense fucking battle of the wandering mind and the distractions but like going back to that fucking doorknob and like it, it, it keeps getting more in depth and each, each time, each chapter. But, uh, you, you said you're going to read that, right? Not for this month. I'm actually already reading a book right now oh, Okay. called Shambhala, the war, the path of the warrior. Is that a James Redfield? No, it's written by a monk. Okay. It's, it's pretty good. So I'm already into that, and I'll probably use that. And then there's a couple of uh, meditative forms that I'll probably grab off of YouTube. But I'll come back with those. So your Mayan calendar, what are you using to gain your information from? Okay, so like, the it, it's not the Mayan calendar specifically that I'm interested in. We're just using it as... No, I, like, you know how like in 2012 everybody thought the world was going to end? Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's like... Not everybody, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was like that big hocus pocus going on. You know, they had it on the news and fucking everything, right? It was ridiculous. Yeah. But, uh, so, and like right now I'm just going off. I'm pretty a, sure I was in jail to 2012. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just going to go off like the gut feeling I had coming up to this. Okay. And the conversation I had with like a dear friend of mine, Ivy, uh, like we were driving the car and I was like, yo, like, what do you think's going on with 2012? Like, you think the world's coming to an end? She's like, fuck no. Like something epic is going to happen. And like, I, and I just said this like off, off the seat of my pants. Like, I bet you the sun is going into like a different life cycle and it's going to give off a different energy and we're going to evolve. I also said that we might become telepathic. So, I'm not. What I don't kind of drugs are you on? Crystal meth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but 
So re- <laughs> like recently I heard something about the sun going into a different life cycle in 2012. And, and that's what the Mayan calendar depicted. I want to look into that, find out any more truth in that or any more hocus pocus. And then your matrix? So like, you know, the man with the mullet, Greg Braden himself, he has a book called The Divine Matrix. And I've listened start to finish to the audiobook once and once only. I'd like to go back to that now after like absorbing that knowledge a y- over a year ago. And like, I want to, f- you know, like sit with it for a while. And then I want to like sit back and watch the fucking movie, The Matrix mm. again for the 25th time and find out like what the similarities are and you know like if we're living in a matrix like so i have an over abundance of teachings inside me to the point where i don't know what the fuck's real and what's not you know it's like studying different religions like and then you need what, to read you need to read this book the shambhala the shambhala book because it really so far, what I'm into, man, it's pretty. It allows you to really get rid of the clutter, man. So, like, remember, I was saying to you earlier today, I, I had said, you know, I read in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous that any spiritual practice, provided that it's practical, would never have an offense towards the pr- the principles that are basically produced in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I've for sure saw that that was real with the Christian world. Catholic, you know, evangelical, didn't matter. For sure it would never offend that, those, like, those principles ever. And then I had, and then, like, I thought, well, maybe Buddhism, but I've, like, studied a lot of religion in the last three, four years. Like, a lot of religion. And uh, now that I'm reading this book, Shambhala, Path to the Warrior, um... It's written for laity. So laity meaning like average schmucks for you and I. And it's also called a secular book in the in the Buddhist world, which means like you don't need a spiritual principle or a spiritual um, advisor to read it with you and take you through. You can just read it and you'll get the, you'll get it, you know, like you, it'll make sense to you. Yeah. After doing a full set of steps and practicing those steps for the last five years and most of my affairs, as much as I possibly can. That book is basically a old reiteration of what the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous says. And that's basically the Christian world as well. Like both of them. So like when you listen to Bill, so Bill W., the guy who wrote the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, talks about writing it. He says that there was, he didn't write the book. There was some sort of divineness that was coming through him as he was writing it. He didn't even know half the stuff that he was writing. And when you look at Dr. Bob, Dr. Bob is actually the um, grammar checker. But Bill W. was essentially the writer of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. And then the other thing that's kind of strange is Bill W. was part of the CIA acid tests before he got sober, man, back in World War II. So I'm kind of like starting to recognize, I don't know if you've ever done acid. No, no, I haven't. But you could see the flashbacks coming to him? Or so I have done a lot of acid, a lot of acid. And I think that's why it's easy for me to, to enter the void. And I started my meditation practice at a very young age. Like, yeah. Like really young for most, like I wonder what would be like to like part. do acid and go for a float. So w- Joe Rogan does that shit all the time, apparently. So one of the things that I've and I've also smoked DMT, I've done peyote, I've done mushrooms, I've never done ayahuasca, and I I really enjoyed, um, like I enjoyed uh, like psychedelics quite a bit. And I was never, I mean, I wasn't really addicted to it. I just like not being in reality. So the first time I did acid, I went on a a three month acid trip. I just fucking did acid every day for three months. (laughs) And, and so I think because like now, like there's not much that, that I'm afraid of in a meditative form because I think I've done that enough. I've breached the other side without losing my fucking mind. I've seen people lose their mind from psychedelics because they do it too much. Same thing with methamphetamine. It's the same shit, right? Yeah. But I think that there's definitely a tie 
of psychedelics into that other place. Like we talked at one time about Dr. uh, Gabor Gabor Mate. Mate. But the problem is, is all of his studies with people using uh, ayahuasca to get off opiates, they all failed. Yeah. Every single one of them went back and relapsed. Every single one of them. Believe me. I've read the, I've read the report from beginning to end. Every single one of them relapsed. They, none of them stayed sober for any length of, any length of time. I heard the opposite. No. I heard that he had great success, but he was banned to no. continue to do it because it's an illegal drug. No, his success his success was based on the fact that they didn't use where they were in their environment, but they all relapsed. Believe me, I read it. So I just read in a book called Game Changers about ayahuasca having amazing effects on curing people from a drug and alcohol addiction. So I agree with Kratom, but I've never seen ayahuasca change to be able to provide a psychic moral change. I've so never been able to see that. Mother ayahuasca, man. Don't talk shit about her. All I'm saying is I've never seen a psychedelic of any, any form give somebody a psychic moral change. Because, you see, if you really want to change a behavior... A psychic moral change is what is necessary. Yeah. You will never find that from an external. That's an internal job. It's not, it's not something that you can produce. Like, you can't take a pill. If you could, we would have addiction beat. You would also have sexual deviation beat. You would have any behavior of a, of a negative form beat. We, we don't have that. If we could bottle it and pill it, the fucking pharmaceutical companies would have did it a long time ago, my friend. Yeah, but they want to and, keep the pharmaceutical and they would have given you a fucked up. They would have given well, so you say, but they would have given you a micro dose so that you're on those drugs for re- for the rest of your life. They wouldn't have given you anything of an actual cure, but they would have given you enough of something that's way better than suboxone and methadone, nicotine. Believe me, <laughs> right? So like. Like that's what I'm saying. There is there is nothing out there that you can bottle and pill that will give you a psychic moral change. It, it just doesn't exist. There's things that can mask it, and there's like, things I, that, What about like mushrooms and and uh, so the, if there's anything and MDMA and stuff and how they're using it to treat PTSD. So there's there is definitely something with psilocybin that helps people who have um, like a, a speech impediment. Really? Can definitely help with that. So it helps neur- the neurological issues in the brain. Okay. When you're talking about PTSD, that's actually ecstasy that they're using, and it's pharmaceutical grade ecstasy. But what does ecstasy, ecstasy do? It allows you to feel like, like there's love. Yeah. So when you're in a PTSD state, you're afraid of everything and you're hyper paranoid of everything and anything around you. You don't trust it. That's that's the sensation of the anxiety from the PT from the PTSD that's coming out. Fuck, I feel like I still have that. So guess what guess what ecstasy does? Gets you away from that because now you start trusting, and you start loving. Yeah, but m- okay. how long is that going to last for? Well, well the point is pharmaceutical grade isn't the shit that you were using out of a bathtub, man. Like it's it's a little bit different than that. Get me some of that. So <laughs> what they're what they're actually trying to do is they're trying to use that to reinforce. But like I said, that is not a moral psychic change. No, it's a mask. I'd That's say. that. Well, you can't reproduce it. Sure, they use the drugs in order to give you what's called psychotherapy to change those behaviors. Yeah. But it's not going to give you a moral psychic change. That's not what's going to happen. A moral psychic change needs to come come from within you. It, you'll never get it externally. Okay. It's like, that's, that's a pretty impossible feat. You know, that's the easier, softer way that you hear all those big book thumpers talk about. That's, that's harm reduction. That's like, like, har- like, even in AA, we talk about harm reduction. We talk about... But like every AA member is supposed to have a bottle of booze in their house in case a man or a female is coming down so hard that you have to wean them off of alcohol because they will fucking die. Okay. It's probably not in your best interest to keep heroin in your house 
for somebody <laughs> who's coming off of heroin, but it's the same it's the same idea, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean that an alcoholic's going to drink because they have alcohol in their house. No, they've gone through a moral psychic change. They're literally like alcohol to them is like oil and water. It will never be together. It'll 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 repel e- from each other even. And that's that's what a moral psychic change does. You haven't just changed your environment. You've also changed anything coming in your environment for that to never even be a part of it. I'm telling you when I say there's gangsters who fucking hate me. Hate me. They can look right at me and they can't see me, Kenny. I fucking robbed them. I fucked their old ladies. You name it. Did it. And they look at me and they cannot see me because the, the moral psychic change is that powerful. I'm not saying that they're not looking at me. What I'm saying is they physically cannot... Like, they cannot recognize me. They just don't see me. I've had people show them pictures of me. They cannot see me. The aura is just not there. That's how powerful a moral psychic change is. Shit you not. Something in there I recognize as truth. For I feel it with, with that. Like, when, you're, when your intentions are good... It's more than that, brother. It's more than that. It's more than intentions because really what you've changed, you haven't, you haven't just changed your intent intentions. You've changed the molecular structure of your spirituality. The DNA is different. It's not by anything that you've made a decision about. It's about something that you've decided or not even decide. You've come to a place where you've acknowledged the issue and you're now in the other dimension. You've moved on. Yeah, in a sense. You've transcended it. It's not about looking at the issue. It's about going past it. That's what's happened. And I've seen that. That is the closest that I could ever explain to you what a big book study is. I've seen that happen to everybody I've ever done a big book study with on a weekend. Every single one of them, provided they started on the Friday, finished on the Sunday, and... Did everything in the middle, the way prescribed and and diagnosed and dead, like I said, they go right through it, right through it. They're on the other side. We in the big book, like we alcoholics, talk about the fifth dimension all of the time. Is it? I feel it's a little culty. Uh, not really. Not really, because all... Drink the juice. Drink my juice. No, really, really what it boils down to is... No, because we don't say it that way. We don't say, all we say is these are the principles. Practice them. That's all we're saying. We're not saying you have to. We're just saying this is the presentation of it. Take it if you want it. If you don't want it, move on. Remember that Simpsons when Homer joined the cult? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, guess, I guess there is a piece to that where there's strength in numbers, but you and I had already talked about on your own, you're a fucking mess likelihood is you're a mess in a community you're wealthy you don't need money you need a community if you have a community all of that fucking all of that shit goes away like all of those materialistic wants and all that bullshit you don't fucking need any of that you don't even need sex when you're in a community man i've been there you you don't need it you're wealthy in a community when you're not wealthy is when you think you're in like some fucking cyber community, some fucking Facebook, Snapchat fucking community. That, that's, that's no fucking community. That's not real people feeding off of what's around them and in them and through them in, in, in a sitting circle. So, yeah, our collective energy. Um, you know how like when you walk into a room and there's like people that are like fucking pissed up or fucked up on drugs – and it feels like you'd walked into a brick wall and it's like thick. The air is thick. You ever feel that? Not anymore. No, like I I've felt it before. Like I, I mean, you know when you go into like a trap house and it just feels like fucking like heavy. Like it's weighing on you. I recognize it, but I don't I it doesn't affect me anymore. I can recognize it, but it's not it's not like that's not I recognize it, like I said, but I don't feel it. Hmm. I see it's there. Like same, like I can be, 
I could be in church or any place that has many people. I could be on the bus and somebody could be piss loaded reaming some woman out next to me. And I actually appreciate that when he finally when he comes to, he'll he may have sorrow in his heart. And I appreciate that what he's just given that woman, she's going to appreciate her time without him even around. When she gets off the bus, life will be better. The day will be great. And what I can appreciate of that entire situation was that I witnessed something where somebody might be able to grow. Or you grow. That's inconsequential. It doesn't matter. I'm just there as a witness, man. I'm not participating. Like, I'm just seeing it. I'm, I'm in a place of appreci- appreciating the entire deal. Good or bad. Good or bad. It's always good. So, I mean, to be realistic, there's good and bad. Do you feel like we live in a perfect world? Fuck no. But you know what? I, this is the way how I see it. I feel like the world is innately perfect. There's just a bunch of messes. Mm-hmm. And those masses in servitude, if I can clean them up, I will. Well, if you I can't, can find unless you're with a community. If I if I f- can find other people who can help me clean it up, well, many hands make the make the make the workload lighter. Yeah. And for whatever reason, sometimes I'm on my own. But if that's what my higher power gives me, well, guess what? He's never given me anything that I couldn't handle on my own. So I have to take that as acknowledgement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is where I ask those three questions. One, is it selfish? Two, is anybody going to get hurt? Three, is anybody going to learn anything out of this besides me? Because I don't matter. I'm going to learn no matter what. Right? I'm going to sit in awe of appreciation of the entire spectacle that's happened. Right? And if somebody actually wants my words and they want my experience, well, then I sit within that appreciation. And that, that all comes from, like, again, this whole entire supernatural stuff. It feels like we've gone in three months with an underlining tone of spirituality. Three months. Relationship was the same thing. And then, and then the beginning of Diet Nutrition Month, we, there's definitely a spiritual element to that. And then here we're sitting in the same place talking about a psychic moral change in the in the innate uh, connection to the earth and 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 it, then, it's funny how we like started talking about like fucking aliens and the matrix and numerology and it fucking led to spirituality. It's crazy, man. Like that's, even like bad eating habits, yeah, to good eating habits, spiritual path. It's crazy, right? Like it's crazy how how important that really is. So on that note, you want to wrap it up? It's uh, an hour, brother. I suppose so. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Please subscribe and share with all your friends. And you can find the After the Show blog at www.lifeonlifestreamspodcast.com. I just want to thank you all. Hey, if you want to find, give me one quick fucking second, and I will get you the... E- or the address to find all of our episodes. Okay, it's http colon forward slash forward slash life on life's terms dot libsyn dot com slash website, and libsyn is spelled l i b s y n. I would assume if they're listening, no, they're listening. You know what the best place is to listen? Fucking pirate radio. Do you know why? Because it's, it's the best. It is the best app out there. Best app out there. Pirate Radio? Pirate Radio. Check it out. If you don't have it, go get it. And get this show on Pirate Radio. Okay. It's awesome. Anyways. Sick. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Watch out for aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out to get pulled up. Peace. <laughs>